so we will discuss the today the continuity of functions we have already seen how to define the functions it's basically a mapping a rule from a set a to a set b such that each element of a we can have a one unique element in b then functions is well defined if there are more than one values of a then we say it is not well defined of course function however when corresponding to each value x we have one value then it is a single value function and for each x if there is more than one values of the uh, image more than one image then we say it is a multi valued function say for example f x is the root x there for each real x positive real x we have two values so it is a multi valued function so we will include all sort of the functions whether it is a single valued function or multi valued function and when we say f x is a real valued function it means that values of the f x lies in the real so let f x be a real valued function the by the domain of f we mean domain of f we mean the set of those real numbers r set of those real numbers x belongs to r such that the fx is well defined well defined at this means fx should not be infinity or minus infinity or the functional at x and it must be a finite value well defined normally the domain of f in general the domain of f normally we consider either a open interval or maybe a closed interval or maybe a semi closed interval say like this or even the entire real line r so it depends on the function where it is defined we are not. and the set of those values of f is the range of f range of f means those bytes such that uh, there exists some x it's such that f x equal to y for x belongs to the domain of f okay so all the images set is the range of the f so this much we have. now the domain of f or the function when we say the function is defined over a domain a then it's not necessary that function the domain will be a continuous defined like a b it may be in the break up form may be the function may not be defined same function may not behave may not be defined over the entire domain it may be a several functions can be in take up over the domain of the f for example if we say f x is say 0 when x is 0 say f x is equal to uh, lying between say um, 1 by n plus 1 less than x less than equal to 1 by n where n is an integer greater than or equal to 2 say then the value of this is defined as the one uh, functional f x is defined by 1 by n so in the interval when it is lying between 1 and 2 1 a half less than x less than equal to 1 the function is defined suppose 1 so this is also a way of defining the function means a function may be take up of this type of also where the interval the domain of definition is from 0 to 1 but it's not the same function by means of the same function we are not defining over the interval what we are doing what we have here is over the several parts of this interval 0 1 this is 0 1 interval we have a different form of the f at different points or all even at a different sub intervals like this so this will be the now there are different types of the functions which we come across the like the rational uh, types of real world function or types of functions which we will come across the first time uh, we a rational integral function uh, a rational integral function all polynomial we can also say it is a uh, all a polynomial 
which is of the form like a naught plus a one x a two x square plus a n x to the power n, uh, where the coefficients a naught a a naught a one a two a n these are all constants real constants, okay, and n is a positive integer. Positive integer belongs to n, so this is also a functional and we denote by p n x a polynomial of degree n. Another type of the function which we come across about the rational functions. Rational uh, functions. A function f x, which is of the form, which is uh, of the form p x by q x, where p x is also a polynomial, say of degree n. Q x is a polynomial of degree say m. What phi of m x is not zero for any x belongs to the domain of f. For ev for every x belongs to f, phi m x is not zero. Then such a function we call it as a rational function, and then a third type of the function which we can approach as algebraic function. Algebraic function is a function is a function which is or which can be which can be expressed as edge edge the root of root of an equation of the form say y to the power n plus f1 y to the power n minus 1 plus f2 y to the power n minus 2 plus fn equal to 0. We are these f1, f2, fn, these are rational functions of f, where these f, f1, f2, fn are rational functions, functions of x. So, the roots of this equation will be a function, because these are all rational functions, coefficients are rational functions. So, the roots will be a function and that function we call it as algebraic functions. Then transcendental functions, transcendental function are those functions which are not algebraic is the is that function which is not algebraic function. which is not algebraic function. So, transcendental functions are there. Now, in this case we have seen so many examples like uh, logarithmic functions, logarithmic function and then trigonometric functions like uh, trigonometric functions and then uh, exponential functions all these function we will come across or this. So, we will discuss in general first the continuity of these type functions and then we will see that these functions which are smooth continuous and also the some uniform continuity will also be tested will be more useful to develop further the theory. Okay. So, let us come to now before going for this uh, say definition for continuity, we will also look we require the bounds for it. So, let y or the bounds bound of the functions bounds of functions. In fact, this is when we say the function f x is bounded when we do we say. So, let f y is equal to f x be a real valued function. function define over its domain, its domain of definition 
whatever whether it interval or maybe a, a union of the disjoint intervals and like this intervals. The set the values of y the values of y corresponding to corresponding to the different values of x x so this will form a set the values of y corresponding to the different values of x so if the set of set of the values of y corresponding to different values of x if it is bounded if the set of values of y corresponding to different values of x where the x belongs to the domain of f is bounded then we say the function f x is a bounded function it means that is mod of f x is less than or equal to some constant that is there exists some m greater than 0 such that this is true for all x belongs to the domain of f what is f x f x is by basically the value of f at the point x denoted by so if the set of all uh, set of values of f x if this set is a bounded set then we say the function f is a bounded function and in the similar way the upper and lower bound of this set the upper and lower bound of this set upper and lower bound of this sets are the upper and lower bound upper and lower bound bounds of the function f x that is if you want the upper bound of f x then find out the all images and then among these images find the upper bound. So, that upper bound will be the upper bound for f x similarly the lower bound for f x like that. <laughs> if this upper bound is finite fine otherwise uh, this may be unbounded set if that upper bound we are not able to get m to be finite. Okay. Now, one more results which we require here that is a theorem given by Westras. The theorem says if a function f x be defined in the interval a b open interval a b then there exist then there exist at least there exist at least one point at least one point in the interval a b in the interval a b such that such that in an arbitrary small in an arbitrary small neighborhood of this point uh, of this point of this point uh, of this point the least upper bound of f x the least upper bound of f x least upper bound of f x is the same age age in a b. So, what he says is if suppose the function be defined this is a function uh, suppose this is interval and the function is defined everywhere at this everywhere it is the function 
is well defined. Then there exists a point say x naught in the interval a b such that in a very arbitrary small neighborhood if I choose then this function will have the same upper bound as it is in over the entire thing. Say uh, if I choose this function suppose this is only function suppose I take this function this function suppose I take. Okay. Now, you see the upper bound maximum value is attained at this point. Okay. Now, we can find a, a very small a point x naught. So, that in an arbitrary small neighborhood the upper bound of the function f a is the same as the upper bound of the function over the entire range a b. That is what is result says. The proof is obviously, the function is throughout well defined function. The proof is very simple. <laughs> Suppose, uh, the upper bound of this is suppose uh, m, okay. then what we do? Let us find that bisection of this interval such that we get this, uh, uh, let m be the upper bound of this. Okay. So, let m be the upper bound of f x over the interval x belongs to a b. Okay x belongs to a b. This is uh, an upper bound for this. Say least upper bound we can say is this. Uh, if it is close interval then we can say say least upper bound of this in the or in the close interval let it be it is okay, no problem. Okay. Now, this interval is given we divide this interval into two parts of equal length. Now, we pick up that interval in which that least upper bound occurs. Okay. Suppose, we have this uh, say this curve suppose like this. Suppose, this curve is. So, what we do is we divide this in a two equal intervals and then we pick up the interval a 1 b 1 which is divide a b interval into two equal intervals of length b minus a by 2 each of length this each each of this length. So, let pick call that interval pick up that interval in which the least upper bound is there. So, obviously, here a 1 b 1 in this interval this upper bound lies. Okay. So, this a 1 b 1 call it this call it this interval a 1 b 1 in which the function f x has an upper bound upper bound call it this. Now, this a 1 may coincide with a or b 1 may coincide with b depending on the function. Now, further again divide a 1 b 1 interval into two equal intervals of length equal to b minus a by 2 square and then pick up this call that interval pick up the pick up the interval say a 2 b 2 in which the function f x has an upper bound. So, you are further dividing this into you are further dividing it into 2. So, now I am picking up this this is we call it a 2 this is b 2 because in this only the upper bound lies continue this process. So, if I continue this process what happens we are getting in this process when you continue you are getting the sequence uh, of the points a 1 a 2 a n such that a is less than equal to a 1 less than equal to a 2 and so on while b is greater than equal to b 1 greater than equal to b 2 and so on. 
So, A is an increasing monotonic increasing sequence, B is a monotonic decreasing sequence, but the upper bound of A cannot exceed by B1 and lower bound of this when you take the B1, B2, Bn all these things the lower bound of this will be again when you take uh, B, B1, B2, B1 is an uh, upper bound here is it not. So, this is bounded above this is bounded below and below will be at the most B. <coughs> B. Okay. So, this will be the both are. So, these are the monotonic sequence these are bounded monotonic monotone sequences and we know the bounded monotone sequence of real numbers or rational numbers they are all convergent. So, they will converge. So, they converges. So, they are these are convergent sequence. So, these are convergent sequences. Hence, A n will converge to a point, B n will converge from there. So, we get from here A B. So, A A 1 less than equal to A 2 less than equal to A 3 n B greater than B 1 greater than B 2 and so on. So, A n will go this side, B n go this side. So, a point x naught can be Trend where the limit of this will coincide. Okay. Why? Because at the nth stage step, what we get the difference between b n minus a n will be half to the power n b minus a. So, as n tends to infinity, this difference is very, very small. Therefore, as n tends to infinity, both the sequence. A n and B n will tend to the same limit, same limit and that limit point is our A, say A <coughs> x naught. It means there exists an x naught and a neighborhood around the point x naught will be there in which the upper bound lies. Okay? So, the point x naught the point clearly the point x naught has the required property required property property that is for any sign for any sign for any sign neighborhood delta of x naught delta of x naught contains contains the interval interval a n comma b n for large n so that so the least upper bound of the function f x in delta is m that is what is proved. Okay. So, this is basically is proved and assuming the function is well defined at each point of this. So, the continuity is obviously is taken in consideration here. So, now looking up there now we come formally the definition of continuity. So, there are two ways of defining the continuity one is given by the Cauchy another one is given by Henne. So, Cauchy has taken in the form uh, using the epsilon delta definition that in terms of the intervals while that Henne has defined the continuity of the function in terms of the limit of the sequences. But both these concepts both the definition are basically equivalent definition. So, we will see first what are these definitions and then we will justify that these two definitions are basically an equivalent definition. So, let us see that <coughs> continuity continuity of the function of functions. So, first the definition by Cauchy Cauchy's definition what the Cauchy definition let the domain of continuity let f x be a function v of real value function, function of 
function define define over a continuous interval interval a b of course here we are taking a continuous interval but uh, it may be uh, a partly function will also be defined with a different way so over a continuous function uh, interval a b and let y equal to f x be the given values of the function at this interval then the function f x the function f x is set to be continuous is set to be continuous at a point at a point x naught in the interval a b if for a given f signal greater than 0 or if corresponding to an arbitrary if corresponding to an arbitrary corresponding to an arbitrarily uh, choosing arbitrary choosing positive number f signal positive number f signal howsoever small may be however small however small okay. uh, another there exist corresponding to this there exist a positive number delta which depends on f sin l as well as on the point x naught such that such that the modulus of f x minus f x minus f x naught is less than f sin l provided mod of x minus x naught is less than delta okay <laughs> it means what the meaning is this a function f is continuous at a point x naught if for a corresponding to a, a sign arbitrary choosing positive number f sin l corresponding to arbitrary choosing positive number f sin l there exist a delta there exist a delta depends on f sin l depends on f sin l so such that this condition hold it means that if we take f sin l is given then we can find out a neighborhood of x naught say x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta a neighborhood can be obtained with respect to this given f sin l with respect to the bond which is given here such that the image of any point x will always fall within this range will always fall within this range that is here is say f x naught then the range fluctuation of this will be f x naught minus f sin l f x naught plus f sin l because mod of f x minus f x naught less than L, this implies the f x lies between f x naught minus f sin l and f x naught plus f sin l and this we mean that x lies between x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta it may so if f is continuous then a neighborhood of the x naught exists such that image of any point x in this neighborhood will always satisfy this condition that is will always fall within this 2 f sin l bits of that step whatever the point you choose if so then we say it is a function it means the total fluctuation the fluctuation of the function of the function f x in the interval 
x naught minus delta to x naught plus delta is what the is basically the difference between these two upper and the lower bound. So, x naught plus epsilon minus f x naught minus epsilon and that is equal to 2 epsilon. So, if this fluctuation is less than 